When you're making a table saw crosscut sled and want to square its fence to the blade accurately, you don't need to look much further than the five cut method. The process is designed to achieve squareness as accurate as one thousandth of an inch, about one sixth of a human hair, which is important because the ends of a board can determine how wobbly a table is or how square a cabinet or box is. But it's not the easiest process to follow. So today I want to show you how we can make the five cut method simpler, quicker, and foolproof. The first thing we'll need is a table saw sled, so that's what I'm building now. I've cut some parts for the base, two fences, and two runners. I'd used to make wooden runners that I'd cut very precisely to fit the miter slots without play, but those would swell and shrink with the seasons, so I tried out these UHMW runners from Amazon. And wow, I will never go back to wooden runners. Plastic runners never swell or shrink, and UHMW in particular is very slick, which makes the sliding action smooth. These are seriously worth the money, and I've linked them in the description in case you want to check them out. Also, I recently started using double-sided tape to attach the runners to the base temporarily before I drove screws into them. This is much less messy and hectic than my previous method of using super glue. While I finish the sled base, let's talk about the downside of the five cut method. While the cutting process itself isn't that difficult, the adjustment formula can be. It's a four part formula that if you mix up even slightly, it can give you some really incorrect answers. Also, the way the formula is presented in 40 minute videos or in Microsoft Word docs that are too small to read on your phone in the shop isn't really user friendly, which is why I built this calculator that is phone friendly and easy to use. Now I can just enter some numbers and get the correct result every time, but I'll talk more about the calculator in a minute. First, we need to attach the front fence. This can be done by eye with a trusted square. This fence doesn't have to be that accurate because its main purpose is to hold the sled together. The rear fence is the focus of our attention. I start by sinking two screws, one at each end, to secure the rear fence to the base. I can align it by eye with a square to get a first reading, but we'll make it even more accurate using the five cut method. Now I complete the blade curve in the sled. To get my first five cut reading, I begin with a small rectangle of material like plywood, and while holding it against the fence, I cut just the very edge. Then I rotate the material, so that freshly cut edge is against the fence, and I make yet another cut. I repeat this until each side has a fresh edge. I just want to take a moment to say if you're finding this video helpful, hitting the thumbs up would be really appreciated. For the fifth cut, I scoot the material over so I can take a bigger slice and make the cut. The width of this isn't really important, but it is critical that you mark which side is which. Side A is the end farthest from you, and side B is the closest one to you. I use a pair of inexpensive digital calipers to measure and record the widths of each end. I write these down because we'll use these when we get to the calculator. Now I can pull up the calculator on my phone and follow the simple instructions. I enter the width of side A, the width of side B, the length of the slice, and that distance to the pivot screw. In my case, it's 22 inches. Lastly, I need to confirm the side of my pivot screw because the directions will change based on this setting. In return, the calculator gives me simple and clear instructions. I need to pivot my fence toward the blade by 14 thousandths of an inch. And because I put 22 in step four, I need to make my correction 22 inches away from the pivot screw. To make my adjustment, I need to use something of a known thickness. I have these cheap feeler gauges from an auto parts store that will do the trick. I find my 14 thousandths gauge and stick it against the fence before putting this little scrap block against it. The scrap is cut to a point to make the correction more accurate. Clamp the block down so it and the gauge don't move. Then I take one screw out of the fence, leaving just the pivot. I can move the fence up to the stop block, clamp, and drive a screw in a new hole. I need to do the five cut method again to get a new reading. The calculator is now suggesting that I shift the fence by six ten thousandths. I don't have a gauge that small, so I'm calling that good. In practice, anything less than one thousandth of an inch is square enough for us. I hope you use this calculator the next time you perform the five cut method. I think it will make the whole process a little easier and a lot more enjoyable. And if you enjoyed this video, I've queued up another just like it right here. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time right here on the Bike City Woodworks channel.